Um, I am happy to tell you that um, the Lojong slogans are as relevant as ever tonight. We're, being, we're going to be doing um, two sets of practice as we did last time um, and as I think we're going to continue doing. So um, I'm hopeful that will be that will be supportive for all of us to do a practice that is training our attention, training our mind, and a practice that is training our heart um, and tonglen. Um, before we get going, our unbelievably fearless, awesome, and heroic uh, volunteers, hosts, guests for the evening of the San Francisco Dharma Collective have some information to share with us. So I'll start with some breaking news and then I'll hand it over to Mason Pam. Um, so we, it feels very strange to do announcements on a day as weird as today, but if there was ever a time to ramp up practice, I feel like that's been true for the last three months and it will continue to be true. <laughs> um, so there are a few things that we're offering here at the collective that may be of interest to you or um, people that you know. And one is that, um, this Sunday, we have Andrea Vecchioni, who some of you may know from the workshops she's done at the collective around uh, Marana Sati, around uh, meditation on death. And she also does our morning class that's beginner friendly, um, because that's how we roll at the collective. The death meditation people also do the beginner classes. Um, she's on Sunday doing a two hour uh, workshop on the Dharma of intimacy. So there'll be a talk and a sit and some time for breakout groups, uh, all in two hours. So you're not spending your whole Sunday on Zoom. So that's on Sunday from 11 a.m. to 1 uh, p.m. And I can put a link in the chat, uh, probably. Yeah, here's a link to the Facebook event. Um, and the other is that our very own Tig O'Malley is starting a six week uh, cultivating emotional balance workshop, particularly for the LGBTQIA plus community. Um, so if you have friends who are in that community, if you're in that community and, you know, if you don't need to cultivate any emotional balance, if you're like all set, um, then you should probably come extra. <laughs> And that starts on September 27th with TIG. Um, so definitely check that out and tell your friends um, because it's a good way to establish a practice if you don't already have one. Um, so I put those two links to Facebook events uh, in the chat. And now I will hand it over to Mason Pam to talk about the collective. Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm Mace and it's just such a balm to have for me the Wednesday night Sangha, especially after a day like today, it feels relevant and grounding and a way um, that I can make sure I don't abuse myself with the Dharma, right? Like there's a way that I can take the Dharma and say, oh, you know about impermanence, you know about imperfection, you know the world's impersonal, what the fuck is wrong with you? Why are you upset today? And that is not actually an, uh, a Dharmic, appropriate dharmic application and so I just feel really soothed by this community and the lojong and the collective and so I'm here to ask that you all contribute what you can. Um, I've been volunteering for a little microsecond to help with the finances and it's really amazing to see how the finances work in this online world and um, you know, it's super helpful for people to donate. And it's a one way that we can keep our teachers uh, motoring along in the capitalist system that doesn't really honor the practice of Donna. Um, and so our teachers are living human beings that live in the Bay Area where it's really expensive. And at some point, the Dharma Collective will be an embodied space again in the Bay Area where it would likely still be, be really expensive. And so it'd be great if folks donated and Katie is putting the link in the window and I'll give a little micro other plug for Tiggs, um, the queer CEB. He's graciously letting me, me assist him with that. And what I'll say is that he's deeply responsive to the needs of the moment. And so while people will really be learning the CEB curriculum, we'll be learning it through what's arising for people um, and also just like how all of this is being digested through queer bodies, 
you know, and what that means specifically. So anyways, it's really great to see you all. And I'm really excited that we're here in this practice community together. Thank you so much and welcome everybody to the San Francisco Dharma Collective. Um, many familiar faces, if this is your first time, welcome. Um, you are in for quite a treat this um, evening that Ch Chandra and I have now, we are on our sixth night of the Lojong and these are the fundamental trainings for turning our mind. And there's just such a simple goal for these trainings and these trainings are to help us really be able to open our hearts to others and in some ways diminish our preoccupation with ourself. And those go hand in hand so beautifully. And each of these slogans, it's like another, it's another facet of the crystal that we get to see, that we get to look through. This doesn't mean it won't provide us comfort in a time like right now. Um, today, part of me thought, okay, let's just get rid of the lojong. We need to be more responsive to what's happening. And then I looked at the text and I was like, well, this is about as responsive to what's happening as it gets. And it gave me even more confidence in this work um, and in these trainings, because I, as I think 2020 has so artfully shown us, there are many opportunities for us to be warriors of compassion now and in the future. And today was, um, for some of us, maybe just, oh yeah, this is a weird atmospheric day. Um, and for some of us, probably just deeply upsetting and unsettling um, and everything in between. And maybe you fell into one of those categories in the morning and then shifted and then shifted again. Um, so I think it's, it's really <clears throat> meaningful for us to be able to apply ourselves fully to these teachings right now. Um, I am going to go into our shared agreements but I am actually going to first give us time to sit. I think it's really important uh, for many of you, you may not have had a chance to sit yet today. Uh, the sit I'm going to do is going to be a bit different than just the traditional settling the mind in its natural state. So Chandra and I have wanted to share practices that are really developing our attention alongside practices that are really developing our heart. And in these first practices, these shamatha practices, often, you know, we do a couple steps and then we go into this open space of the mind. But tonight, I think we need a couple more rungs on the ladder to get there. So tonight, we'll start with a process of arriving here fully by doing what's called a retrospective awareness of our day, really tuning into the lived experience of from when we woke up until right now. That practice in and of itself is attention training, but also one that really helps us catch up. Uh, for those of you who had to go throughout the day as though it wasn't the apocalypse, um, there was a lot of suppression that happened emotionally. There was a lot of compartmentalization and that creates tension, that creates challenge um, for us to really be with and be present and embodied in our experience. So that practice will help us show up in our bodies. And then we will turn towards the bodies with the handshake practice. So really honoring and being with the emotions that are here right now. And then we will make our way into finding that beautiful, gracious space of mind, even if it's just a glimpse. So. Just so grateful you all are here and glad we get to be together. So let's start by finding a comfortable mm -hmm. posture and position one that really honors the dignity of what we're doing here together. Sitting as though we were sitting in our throne of meditation. So finding a sense of balance from the very root Maybe you can tilt your body slightly to the right and to the left, a little bit forward and a little bit backward and find where the uprightness of the spine is natural. Maybe not comfortable, but at least there's a natural feeling there. And feel and invite a spaciousness and ease around the belly.
Allow that sense of being supported from beneath you to rise up from the chair or the cushion. Feeling as though this base, this belly and buttocks were like the base of a mountain, so solid, so stable. Finding a place that is restful for our hands and inviting the hands to relax even more. Softening, releasing, no need to grip. And traveling up the spine, invite a sense of openness and slight upward tilt to the chest, as though there were an invisible thread from the heart up into the sky above. Invite the chin to just gently be sloping forward. And the gaze, even with eyes closed, slightly downward and softly focused. Invite a rest and refreshment through the eyes. Allow these first breaths to be a welcoming for whatever is here. Without any rush or hurry whatsoever, just notice what it's like to be in this body, in this mind, and in this heart, moment to moment. Maybe to your surprise, you find peace. Maybe an upwelling of grief. Maybe the jangly threads of anxiety and fear. With this dignified, upright posture, welcome in whatever is here. Gently shifting from this present moment awareness, I'm going to invite you to go back in time to when you first opened your eyes this morning. On most days, this might be hard to remember, but on this morning, for many of us, this was a unfamiliar and novel experience. Remember what you saw, the quality of light or darkness. And can you remember the very first thoughts going through your mind? And do you remember what it was like in your body? Do you remember the feeling of warmth or coolness beneath covers? Maybe aches, maybe restfulness. And then moving ahead in time to some moment you can recall in your mid-morning. 
Maybe you were connecting with a colleague, a friend or loved one. Maybe just looking out the window. Choose and identify one moment you can recall from your mid morning. And once again, with vivid detail, recall, what were you seeing? What were you thinking? And what was the quality of emotions in the body? The key here to sustaining this as an attention practice and not a rumination practice is to observe and recall without getting caught up in the story, the events. So move ahead in time to some point in the middle of your day. For many of us, we might have been receiving texts or emails, concerns. See if you can just identify again a single moment. What were you seeing? What was in front of you? What were you thinking? Were the thoughts fast? Were they slow? Was there shock, uncertainty? What did this feel like in your body? And then moving ahead in time to just a couple hours before we gathered here together. Again, choosing any moment. And vividly bring to mind what was going on in front of you. Maybe it was a computer screen, maybe it was the window, maybe you were even outside. What were you taking in from the visual field? What were you thinking? What were the emotions and what was the experience of being in your body? Moving ahead in time to when you first entered this virtual Sangha this evening. Again, recalling what you were seeing, maybe the faces of those familiar or unfamiliar. What were the thoughts? Can you recall just 15, 20 minutes ago, what was it like in your body? And then moving ahead in time, once again to this moment. What is the quality of light, the patterns, still visible with eyes closed? In this moment, what is the content and quality of your thoughts? No need to deny them, just don't engage, observe, notice.
And right here in this moment, shift to be pouring all of your attention, all of your awareness into the body. Find the residue of this entire day. The peaks and valleys, the entire territory of felt experience throughout the body. Keep coming home to the body. Experiencing the body from within the body, not an image of it, not as though you were looking down upon it. Continuing to notice and make space for whatever sensations are present. Sensations of strain or pain at the physical muscular level and sensations of anxiety uncertainty, frustration, the entire range. Make space and keep noticing the felt experience of the body right now. Attend closely, noticing these sensations shifting, changing, possibly even deeper, more tender levels emerging, shifting, changing, and re-emerging again. When you notice your mind has been caught up by a thought, a memory, an image, just gently relax. Release and refresh your interest, bringing it back down here into the body. The body is always in the present. Come home to this present moment of the body.
And then gently, we will shift our attention away from the tactile sensations of the body and expanding to the space of the mind and the contents that arises within it. In this shift, if it's comfortable, you can slightly open your eyes, having them softly focused in front of you. And feel or imagine the boundlessness of your own awareness. Primordially still as the motion of thoughts and memories and images will arise, rest in that stillness. Whenever a thought arises and is sticky enough to draw our attention away, relax, release, and refresh your interest in this quality of stillness beneath the disturbed surfaces, this quality of mind that is always essentially still, vast and luminous. It doesn't matter if the mind feels busy or if the mind feels lethargic. There is still space and stillness beneath that surface level. If the eyes have been open, gently closing the eyes. 
And bringing your attention and awareness back into the body. Noticing with curiosity and kindness, what, if anything, has shifted or changed? And taking a moment here to consider your intention for showing up here tonight. What matters? What values are deeply reflected in your presence here? And let this intention fully fill the space of the heart and mind, illuminating from the inside. Being beautiful children of illusion, as we are instructed to do in an earlier slogan, really maintain and sustain yourself in any kind of relaxation or openness or simply presence you were able to touch into with that practice as we slowly come back together. Just reminding us to care really deeply for each other tonight. These agreements of the San Francisco Dharma Collective and the well of being, this way that we can create community that is supportive, inclusive, and understanding, non-harming, and joyful. My abbreviated version of our agreements, I'm, I'm happy to uh, respond a bit further to questions from folks. Um, about those, if those arise. I'd like to share the ninth slogan, and then I'd like us to have a little bit of time to connect together about that practice and that slogan. The ninth slogan is, <laughs> in all activities, train in the slogans. I feel like that's a little bit cheating, like it's slightly propaganda for a slogan within a slogan. This slogan is to remind you that all the slogans are important. Um, what I like about this slogan is it gives us a lot of flexibility. In some ways, this slogan invites us to make any slogan our own. As I was mentioning in the very beginning of our time together that the very point of these practices is to increase loving kindness and concern for others and to decrease self-absorption and ego fixation. Any slogan that you can create with that in mind is the right slogan. This also slogan reminds us that we can find an opportunity to use that very idea of increasing our care, our loving kindness and compassion for others with anything that life presents us, everything that life presents us. Oh boy, are we in the training ground. We really are. So I would really love to hear from people 
either anything they reflected upon in that practice of really turning towards what's here in the body, giving ourselves an opportunity to be with the mind just as it is, training in our attention. And is there a slogan right now for today, a slogan that would help you in that endeavor of increasing your care for others? And as much as possible, unpacking or disentangling our fixation and self-absorption. Um, so I am going to keep my eye on the chat here. I saw there was uh, some men some before um, before meditation contributions. Walt says, "Horrible day!" Double exclamation point. You could have gone three. I think Walt really horrible day. Uh, and Walt shares, I'm old enough to remember duck and cover in school. And the sky especially reminded me of a sky full of nuclear fallout and resurrected that childhood fear. That is, feels very tender. I spent a weird part of my childhood reading up on a nuclear winter. That was a fixation for me for about six months and I didn't live through it, but my, today I looked out and I was like, wow, this is what a nuclear winter would feel like. Um, it is a very scary time, very scary. Uh, Deborah shares um, that she remembers that too and hoping the meeting will make both of us feel better. Okay, so yeah, would love to hear from folks, comments on the practice or comments on what is your slogan? What is your version of the slogan for today? Eve, I just have a clarification. Yeah. The slogans that we've learned so far or the and the actual Lo Zhong slogans are like Mace's slogan. I would say however it lands with Mace. Because again, the, the quintessential, like, so this slogan kind of invites us to recognize that in all activities we train in the slogans. Like anything we do, any day, any moment, it really can be an opportunity to almost create our own slogan. So we can, we can really memorize all 59 and choose one that fits exactly that moment. Or we can just adapt the general ethos of all of the slogans, which is really increasing this loving kindness and reducing this self fixation. Mm -hmm. Okay, then I'll share mine for lately is just the phrase and the practice even the just like me practice hmm. so the phrase just like me like other people are freaked out just like me people want to flee <clears throat> just like me people are seeking comfort maybe in less than healthy <laughs> like i just made nectarine almond muffins you know like but so just like me is super helpful right now for me. Beautiful, thank you. Yeah, and, and for folks maybe not familiar with that practice, it's, it's often one that is done staring into the eyes of another, which is both profoundly awkward and deeply moving, right? When you're looking at and facing that mirror. Um, thank you, Mace. Uh, I see Jason saying, I feel completely disoriented. And this day was like the straw that broke the camel's back. I was holding out and being fierce, the warrior against all the horrible things happening and the darkness of this day, the upside down backwards of it, it broke my heart. <sighs> Thank you, Jason. I feel that. I felt for myself closer to what I understand panic to be than I remember feeling in a long time. Just this, you know, kind of urgency intensity. Um, and I, I am, you know, aware of the fact that even if I succumb to panic or Jason succumb to his, his full camel back being broken, we still have to get up tomorrow. <laughs> and that's, you know, I don't think, um, it's interesting, there's such a, a delicate balance between our strength and our uprightness right now, 
and the tenderness and the letting be of what's here. We don't always need to hold it together. That's not a requirement. Thank you for that, Jason. Um, Eli mentions that the nectarine almond muffin practice is, yeah, that's, that's, that's in line. Um, Jenny says, yes, Mace, just like me, all in this together. When I was out shooting this morning, photographs, um, there were so many people out with their phones. Everyone wanted to talk. Everyone was just like me. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I, it has been um, somewhat of a recurrent theme that both we are all in this together and that right now loving each other feels like the only important thing. Um, it's so interesting because there's this duality, of course, not duality, but interesting paradox in our practice, which we are endeavoring to truly focus on our own transformation and we need others to do it. And we do it for the sake of others. So that's, it's just a, it's a beautiful, um, I would say, yeah, I think inquiry for all of us of how much are we trying to do it on our own? Um, how much are we allowing others in? And where can we find that really sacred balance of knowing our motivation when we are turning inward and allowing ourselves to do the practice for just us or with us? And then how much can we share it? Um, Marlena sharing, this was my first time at the gathering. Thank you for this space. Okay, she's being pulled away. You're so welcome, Marlena. Thank you for joining us. Jason, thank you for the meditation. <laughs> It'll help you wake up tomorrow. Yes, I hope so. Um, and Seema is expressing her worry for those who are homeless. Yeah, our, our unsheltered brothers and sisters right now. Um, the whole time of COVID has been hard. And, and this moment is hard. As everyone who's been outside noticed, there's you know ash just coating cars and coating surfaces. Yeah, and I uh, sneak preview, we are headed to a Tonglen practice. So we, are, we will give ourselves this transformational opportunity of turning towards the suffering and inviting a way that we can transform it with our compassion. And yet in this moment, it, it feels important to just honor all of these experiences and honor the transparency. When we can be transparent with our emotional experiences, that is truly the first step to our ability to, in any way, um, find our way through, not just find our way to kind of tamp down and temporarily deny. We can all do that. Television, drugs and alcohol, just, you know, any kind of distraction. Um, if only it worked in the long term, I'd recommend it, but it doesn't. And it makes us feel more disconnected and alienated from our experience. Um, Claudia is sharing, <clears throat> my heart went out to the firefighters who are fighting the inferno, the evacuated, and to nature. Thank you, Claudia, for bringing those beautiful beings here with us. Yeah, all the creatures of the forest and the forest themselves. Yeah. Uh, Diane shares, I was panicky all day, the smoke is the remnants of life forms that destroyed. And this practice helped me get into my body and out of the despair and dystopic sense. Thank you for sharing that, Diane. Noam is sharing that the startle of it brought people together. It's an awakening, very open conversations. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah, similarly, my first meeting of the day, I was really challenged to try to do any kind of business as usual. Just how can we? It almost invites this empathic attunement as there's no way to actually get anything done if we're so dysregulated. And an ability to feel connected to others, we can move forward some, some limited level. Uh, 
and Tanya sharing that she resonates with that thought about the smoke being the remnants of life forms. Yeah. Yeah. Amy is sharing, I've been on edge all day. Meditation was a release of a lot of fear as my brother is a firefighter and heading into Oroville on a strike team. Oh, wow. Thank you, Amy, for sharing that. And yeah, for sharing that direct connection to, the, to those who are, yeah, putting their life and limb at risk at this moment uh, for our state, for this, um, this super challenging time. Other folks in terms of either reflections on the practice or what is a slogan that works right now? Um, and I'd love to hear anybody's voice if they feel like speaking. Um, I have a friend who says that their current way of thinking is already dead. Little morbid there. I don't know if he has a Buddhist background um, or if he's just succumbing to paranoia. But in some ways, yes, right? The, um, as Shanti Deva writes to us, we just completely deny and ignore the fact that we're already walking around as corpses, just not yet decayed, right? So how can we embrace the impermanence? Um, maybe that's a Lojong slogan for now, if we can take it without too much morbidity. <laughs> Uh, Diane says, cheerfulness did not uphold me today. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, yeah. And Walt says, this too shall pass. Um, Claudia is sharing that neighbors came out and were all startled as well, noticing how quiet and eerie it was. No birds. Yeah, the no birds. Um, neighbors, chickens were quiet, comforting to talk and text with family and friends. We need connection. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else, any reflections or thoughts on the practice? Any questions or any insights of arriving, kind of finding our way through the day, placing ourselves? shaking hands with whatever's here and then allowing ourselves maybe some of that respite of the spaciousness of mind. Hi, Ethan, everyone, yeah. Pamela. Um, I just noticed from the practice perspective that I was surprised by how much of the like nervy kind of anxiousness for me was actually really just here. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't actually because when we got into the, I was like, oh, not as crazy as I think I am about everything. You know, I mean, I, I was definitely activated today by the whole situation, but it was like, really located here and a lot of times my anxiety will be more in the lower parts of my body mm. so i just noticed that was showed up differently for me today than sometimes it does yeah good noticing yeah yeah i think it's really interesting to notice <clears throat> those imprints um i noticed in doing that practice um together with you all that i had some um frustration actually uh and it's kind of like it was like behind the back of my head um i think there's part of me that resents that i had to go to work today <laughs> and i'm holding on to it that's no problem to feel that but that there was still like a like kind of like a uh hanging out um so i think it really can be um quite informative to notice that at the the subtle body or body level um, I see from Donna that a friend on the East Coast reported she has COVID even after wearing masks and trying to be careful. I've been feeling uncomfortable in my body all day and sitting. I'm so restless in LA. The air is okay on the West side and I'm grateful. 
glad to hear that Donna that the air is good and um, yeah it's hard to not feel restless in the body um, and I think it's so interesting this um, expectation of stillness in our practice and maybe some of you over time or in different times in your life or your practice you're like do I really need to sit still can I meditate walking or running or dancing um, and those are all amazing practices, amazing opportunities for um, expression and um, embodiment. And yet the stillness, even when it doesn't feel still, there's such a powerful teaching there. Moving our way towards that, even occasionally dipping into that stillness. It's, it's all conceptual until we, we have a taste of it, but to just really, I imagine it almost as though you're kind of putting down this um, bucket into a well and you keep putting like, God, I don't know if we're ever gonna reach water. I'm just gonna continue putting this bucket down. And then you just get this moment and you can feel the refreshment of stillness, just hitting that water, just amazing. Um, Mahin, um, and please correct me if I am pronouncing that wrong, I would much appreciate it. Reliving my day through my sit was giving me a perspective on impermanence. Yeah, one thing that practice can do, the retrospective awareness practice on an um, ordinary day that is just in its own level of stressful, is we can recognize that throughout the day where our body is and where our mind is often very disconnected. And we can realize that we actually spent most of our day outside of our body completely. So it's a practice to help us kind of like gather back in our full self together, um, putting it in the same place. Joe shares the already dead notion reminded me of Ajahn Chah commenting that a glass he loves in his mind is already broken. Mm. He said, when I understand that this glass is already broken, every moment with its with it is precious. Mm. It can be morbid, but I still appreciate that perspective. So thanks for sharing it. Yeah, that's so beautiful. Am I right that the Death Sangha is also this Saturday night? Sorry to do a midway plug, um, but those who have an interest in doing that practice of embodied impermanence, Michael Taft um, leads a Death Sangha. I haven't been to it since it's been online. Um, my experience of it was profound. Um, uh, it's, it's a challenging practice to imagine your own body and its um, dying process, yet there, there are other ways to do this. Thank you for sharing that, Joe. I really love that. Already broken, right, uh, as a way to feel the preciousness. Uh, Seema is sharing that I had to go to work, and although I was late, it really helped me settle to turn towards each of them and what they needed of me as a social worker. Yes, Ema. I'm a social worker. Even though I don't practice social work anymore, it never goes away. Uh, um, so thank you for the confirmation on practice uh, with Michael Taft. Um, so I'm gonna share our next slogan as we move into our next practice together. <sighs> thank God, begin the sequence of sending and taking with yourself. Oh, so a reminder we did in our last points of the Lojong that um, there is the relative and the ultimate bodhicitta. There is this practice of sending and receiving. There is this beautiful practice of Tonglen, which, you know, all of these slogans are helping us improve and refine our practice of Tonglen. For those of you who maybe this is your first time hearing it, or maybe it's the millionth time hearing it. Let's revisit this practice of Tonglen. It's the practice of giving and receiving and really putting ourselves in the place of the suffering of another. So what does that mean when we do that for ourselves? Um, when we are doing that for ourselves, we're actually creating an opportunity to witness and bear witness to our own suffering. And um, as appealing as that may sound for some of you, for a lot of us, that's hard for a lot of reasons. 
a lot of reasons. Um, it's, it's difficult to look into our own layers of suffering. And, and for many of us, um, I, I, I speak as a social worker, many of us as caregivers and care providers, that's the last place we want to look. We want to look at everyone else's suffering before we want to look at our own. And many of you have thought about this and worked with this idea quite well. And I was enjoying reviewing commentaries on this practice that it's not just that we look at the explicit suffering, the blatant suffering, right? The suffering of our pain, maybe we have back pain, or our loss, maybe we lost a family member. But how many more layers and levels can we really look at and be with our pain? The more we can do that, the more we can even just kind of surface our low level regrets. God, I wish I would have. Or maybe our feelings of not enough or comparison. We often think of that as unpleasant, but maybe not treat it with that same care of Tonglen that we do to the, to the bigger things that happen to ourselves. And if we want to really excel in our practice of empathy and caring for others, we also want to be able to be sensitive and caring, not just for people's big events, not for the blatant suffering that we're all easily able to recognize, but for that feeling of regret and anxiety, for that feeling of shame or discontent. So it's interesting when we think about turning towards this challenge and difficulty, of course we're doing so selflessly, <laughs> that is the goal. And yet what we might find is that there's a lot of benefits to turning towards our own pain and suffering, to doing this practice of Tonglen for ourselves. We might find some relief. And we might find that it is actually a comfort to kind of surface and purify the muck of our inner workings, the things that are holding us back, whether it's a limiting self-belief or a feeling of longing and loneliness that we've had our whole life. And right now, <laughs> it's interesting to have at least some shared language, vocabulary, and experience of suffering that we can all turn towards. So even though we'll be doing this tonglen for ourselves we'll be aware that we're actually doing this practice with others. And I think that that's really beautiful and somewhat to what Mace was pointing out. Sometimes it's easier for us to care for ourselves when we recognize just like everybody else. And that's our bridge to the Tonglen for others. So for us to be able to really feel and appreciate the challenge or discomfort, the pain, the suffering, that we're experiencing. We then recognize a desire for it to be different, for us to be free, to kind of take in and send out that beautiful act of Tonglen, which is really transforming another suffering with our compassionate intention. I was listening to a talk of Pema Trojan. I have listened to, I mean, if it was, you know, a book, the pages would be worn out. It's a talk she gave on uh, Tonglen maybe probably almost 10 years ago. And I still heard something new. She was talking about how Tonglen, this very act of pulling in and pushing out with love, is not only an act that strengthens our compassion, it's also an act that helps us develop our emptiness, our shunyata. Because when we're pulling in, often the part where we get like, oh, I don't know if I want to pull that in. God, that's really uncomfortable. We're solidifying it. We're making it a thing. So by pulling it in and flowing, letting it just flow in, we're denying an objectness to that suffering. Whether that's the suffering of our unsheltered brothers and sisters right now, whether that's our own suffering of shame or guilt, resentment, jealousy. If we don't want it, if we're kind of resisting it, if it feels too like hard or solid to bring in, we recognize that we've made it a thing. And so Tonglet is not only helping us transform because we're kind of coding it with that compassionate intention, it helps us pull apart 
any concept of it being solid. Pretty cool, right? I just love, I just love, love, love the interplay of wisdom and compassion, of insight and compassion. They are just, just always beautifully um, enfolding themselves. So when we think about, you know, this ability to um, practice Tonglen for ourselves, it's, it's a really lovely, um, it's a lovely way of considering all the different ways that, um, that we can do so. So some of that can be, of course, for our current circumstance. But the practice we're going to do together is actually one in which we recognize and bring into our awareness now the suffering we've had in the past, the suffering we may be experiencing now, and the suffering that we may, with all likelihood, experience in the future. <laughs> so when we do this practice of Tonglen for the past, it's alchemy. As I've mentioned before uh, in, in, this, um, in this Sangha and community, I just am really moved by our ability to transform the past by creating a holding container of compassion in the present. And that is not just a, uh, an aspiration. That's not only evidenced by the historical practices of meditation. There's amazing work in terms of memory that really identifies and points towards the past is way more influenced by how we think about it right now than what happened back then. And for many of us, we kind of create the past by continuing to dredge it back up in a certain way. When if our life was in, you know, high definition 360 um, video imagery at all time, we might be able to go back and be like, oh my God, that thing in third grade that I've been carrying with me this whole time, it was totally different. I wasn't even there. Or like, right, like people have these unbelievable uh, realizations at some time that like, I, I remember reading about one where this person was so convinced at that they had been with another person the day that John F. Kennedy was shot. And they had this whole narrative and their whole life and this whole story, it was so relevant. And they managed to figure out by running into that person again, it was like a classmate, they weren't even there together. They, were, they hadn't even met yet. So this idea of our past as being this arbiter of truth that informs the way we see the world now, it does, as being fixed and solid, that too, not fixed and solid. Additionally, as many of you know who are clinicians or have been through um, clinical um, treatment yourself, when we are looking at what are the treatments that are undergone for trauma, what's often used, the most evidence-based practice, at least now, is exposure therapy. That's like the worst name ever. Nobody wants that. Um, but exposure therapy has a very similar principle. The idea is actually with compassion, re-exposing yourself to what was hard and reminding yourself in this moment you're safe. So as again, many of you are familiar with, a traumatic event is kind of um, defined by a core feature of feeling as though your life was threatened in that moment. So that experience, that profound lack of safety, whenever it reinserts itself into the present, that lack of safety is here. So with exposure therapy, you're creating a container that feels safe, a loving container. So I'm not inviting us tonight, as I am not a trauma therapist and we are not in a, in a setting of a clinical um, uh, clinical office, I'm not inviting us to go back to trauma. I'm using that as an example that we can revisit memories that are hard and find that there is a transformative power of our tonglen here and now. It's so empowering. So empowering. And this can be literally happened last week. <laughs> it doesn't have to be really far in the past. Something that is, you know, a way that we can easily recognize the past hurt and practice ourselves, practice for ourselves. And then of course we have this present moment, quite a lot to practice with right now. 
And when we travel into the future together to practice Tonglen, we don't need to get all apocalyptic paranoid. We could. There's some really good evidence about our upcoming political election that could be plenty of fodder for that. We can just even get simple and humble and recognize that the causes and conditions that lead to our suffering, they will continue. Not getting what we want, getting what we don't want, those aren't going anywhere. And how can we, even in this imagined future, almost prepare ourselves for Tonglen? Because the whole idea with these slogans, right? Why both, I think, nine and 10 together. So nine in all activities train in the slogans and 10 begin the sequence and taking with yourself. They're intended to really start to become a reflexive part of who we are. So that the moment we encounter discomfort and suffering in ourselves, our first reaction is this one of turning towards with compassion. So let's practice again. And we can connect more about it afterwards. This won't be as long of a practice, but please find yourself in your dignified seat once again. And we've been sitting for a while, so let's give ourselves some early kindness by inhaling our shoulders up to our ears and exhaling them down our back. And once again, inhaling our shoulders up to our ears and exhaling them down our back. And one more time. And let's begin again by coming home into the body. The restless body, the anxious body, the peaceful body. And taking a moment to find the natural rhythm of the breath and allowing this to be where your mind can focus. Noticing the breath as it travels in, noticing the breath as it travels out without intervention, without preference. And gently shifting our attention to the space of the chest.
And before we engage in our practice of Tonglen, beginning with ourselves, taking a moment to prime the pump, considering for a moment the great and vast capacity of this heart. Considering all of the love that has been received in this lifetime from other beings, from the planet. Just that feeling of having been held in love over and over and over and over. Also reflecting and considering how many times we have extended love to other beings, to ourself, to the way in which we have been in harmony with this planet. That capacity, that vastness. And even if the heart at this moment feels as though it is a bit achy or heavy, we have evidence to believe that no matter how many times it is broken, this heart maintains its essential form, it is possibly strengthened through each turn and twist of adversity. And with this sense of confidence in our own heart, we shift to this practice of Tonglen. Beginning by going back in time to an experience maybe in the last weeks, months, maybe in the last years, in which we experienced hurt and pain. Anything that comes to mind is okay. Maybe not the most intense pain or hurt, something mid-range that squeezes the heart. And travel back in time to meet yourself as though you were seeing yourself in front of you. Remembering and recalling the challenge of that time. The hurt, the ache, the confusion. Really seeing clearly the suffering without judgment, without denial. And then beginning this process of seeing this precious being in front of us who is suffering and inviting in with our inhale, a transformation to bring in that suffering to the strength and light of our heart and to exhale with this simple wish, may you be free of this suffering. Inhale, drawing in with this heartfelt concern and care and exhaling radiant light, warmth, and care. As you inhale and draw in, maybe consider the words most meaningful to comfort that past you, that precious being. Inhale, drawing in, 
Exhale. May you feel safe. May you feel belonging. May you know love. And continuing here, vividly bringing to mind in front of you this beautiful, precious being who is suffering. Taking them into your own heart and extending out with love. Couple more cycles of breath here. Noticing if anything feels caught or stuck. Really trying as much as possible to let the breath fluidly draw in and extend out. One last breath, one last heartfelt, caring salute to this beautiful being. And exhale, extending that love in all directions. And coming back to the natural rhythm of the breath here. And shifting our lens now to this moment, as though there were a mirror in front of you and you could see yourself right here in whatever room you are in, in whatever part of the country you are in. Seeing yourself fully, seeing your suffering in this moment. Recognizing and opening up to the layers of what's here. Again, taking in this precious, beautiful being. The suffering of this being. Feeling the tenderness of the heart, feeling the strength and uprightness of the spine. Strong back and soft front. Fully letting yourself see this suffering. And with this beautiful being in mind and all their suffering. Using your breath once again to inhale and receive this suffering. And transforming at your heart. And extending out. May you be free. May you be safe. May you know ease. Inhale, drawing in. Exhale, extending out. Notice if this is hard or edgy. Just keep as much as possible sustaining this heartfelt intention of compassion for yourself in this moment. Fully seeing and fully opening up to the struggle and the suffering. And imagine fully transforming it with a radiant light at the heart. And the words most suited to this moment, your own slogan.
Inhale, drawing in. Exhale, I love you. May you be free. One final breath here, fully drawing in the whole landscape of our challenges, our struggles, our suffering, fully opening, fully transforming, and extending out clear, bright, and light. Releasing this mirror image of you here right now, returning and restabilizing with the rhythm of the breath. And now shifting our sights to the future. So unknown, so uncertain. And yet we can be assured the causes and conditions of our suffering will once again rise up to meet us. Bring to mind a future you placed right here in front of you, maybe weeks ahead, maybe months, maybe years or decades. Tenderly invite this future you who is suffering. See this beautiful being, see their pain. And again, with this profound generosity of heart, open yourself to their suffering to your suffering. And with the breath, transform. Inhale, drawing in with this clear image of a future beautiful being suffering. Exhale, extending out. In the future, may you be safe. In the future, may you know ease. In the future, may you feel loved cared for, connected. Inhale, drawing in this vivid, clear image of the future you. Exhale, extending out bright, clear radiance. Gently releasing this image, saying farewell to this future you. Coming back to the rhythm of the breath. Feeling this heart, feeling the exercise of this heart extending to oneself. Relaxing and making space around the heart and emotional residue.
Thank you for your beautiful hearts. Part of me wants to stay here all night. And yet, I want to honor and respect your time. I would love to hear from anyone thoughts or reflections on that practice, obstacles or openings. Yeah, whatever, whatever surfaced in that timeline. Tanya said that was wonderful. I'm so glad. Future you is pretty crazy, huh? I don't know how often you guys practice for future you, but wow, future you is really beautiful and complex. Hmm, thank you, Claudia, said that felt great to love myself. Joe points out, technically, we're always practicing for future us. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. 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 Um, it's been a real uh, honor and pleasure to be with you guys tonight. Um, and in community together. Um, just don't know what is next. None of us do, but I am glad we get to be here together tonight. Um, oh, Heidi says, thank you for pointing this out. Tried not to feel too self-indulgent. Oh, it's such a hard one for that practice. Yeah, yeah. Good job with the, with the identifying and, and working through. Can I share the Pema talk? Yes. Um, let me see if I can look it up as we are closing. Um, gosh, I don't know if I'll be able to find it. It's, it's so funny. The way I can describe it, um, if someone else could look it up, <laughs> is uh, Pema Chodron Tonglen, that's obvious, and many videos come up, but there's only one that comes up with an image of a monk walking through the streets. All the other ones are her, and it says Tonglen and Pema Chodron. This one, it's about an hour. Um, it's not her, just a picture of an image of a monk walking through the street. So um, if I don't, if we can't find it tonight, oh, Ghana, good job. That was awesome, very impressive. Um, then, um, yeah, if we, if we don't make it tonight, which it looks like we did, we could do it next time. And um, yeah, just thank you all for being together. Stay close to your practice. Stay close to each other. Love deeply, love well. May this practice that we are engaging in provide refuge for all beings who so deeply need refuge right now. May every being in this planet find peace. May every being in this planet find ease. May every being in this planet know the love of compassion. Thanks everyone. If you'd Thank like you, to Eva. unmute and say farewell, love to hear your voices. Have a great rest of the week, everybody. Be safe, be well. Thanks be for being well. here. Bye. Bye everybody. Thank you, Eve. It's so nice you. to be together. Be well. Thank you, Eve and Katie. Thanks Thank everyone. You. Thank you. Thank you. Until next time.
Good night. Good night. Good night. Wonderful Good night. practice. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you, everyone.